Ladies and gentlemen, it is back. And when I say it, I am obviously referring to the offseason. Now, what does that offseason entail? Well, the Sunday special. <laughs> Welcome back to the Sunday special. First one in a long time. It is going to be themed as such. Um, first week without NASCAR since... Uh, August? Something like that. I don't remember. Long time ago. That's what I can tell you. Um, so yeah, we're going to take a look today at, um, if you haven't already seen the title, we're going to be taking a look at our champion, Kyle Larson, uh, or at least the raced versions slash diecast of his that I have in my collection. So I have a grand total of 12. We're going to do the top 10 with two honorable mentions. Hint, hint, you get to see all of the cars in my collection to this point. There will be some coming later, but to this point. Now, I will do them in an order of like... Um, kind of favorite to not favorite, you know, kind of a countdown, but the two honorable mentions will be honorable mentions for pretty obvious reasons, so. Uh, but anyway, there's no real reason to keep rolling around here. You guys know what to do. Thumbs up, all that fun stuff, but let's get into the Sunday special. First honorable mention on this list is going to be Kyle Larson's 2015 Enios Chevy Camaro. Now, what is the, why, why did I pick this one? Like, why do I even have this car? I generally don't get cars like this. Well, here's why. I need to get some decals done. One goes across here, and one goes across here that they're all orange, and there's a special type of spray that you can put to make it a matte finish. Now, I know all of that sounds like kind of ridiculous, because it is. This is going to be turned into a 2018 Kyle Larson Chicagoland win. I was at the race for that, ra uh, for that, uh, that was, re oh my gosh, it was ridiculous ridiculously hot it was the that is the hottest race weekend i have ever been a part of and it was awful heat index was 105 every day and oh it was terrible i mean it was so humid it was just i could not believe how bad it was um the heat itself i don't think was as bad but i remember you just get out of your car and instantly just be stuck with this sticky heat oh it was gross uh as i said i'm from the north where you know we we don't like hundreds we don't like triple digits you know it's gonna be like 25 degrees tomorrow and I'm loving it. So, um, you know, a little different. But anyway, so that's what this is for. It's not quite customized yet. Obviously, if it was, it would be higher on the list. Actually, it came pre-autographed too, which is kind of cool. Um, so yeah, this is one on the list. But as I said, it's not customized yet, so that's why it's number 12 on the list. Uh, now, number 11 on the list, this is kind of a an interesting one because this is a car that I really had no interest in buying until I found it for like 40 bucks. And this is the Kyle Larson Vegas Strong Elite. Um, this is a actual raced version, like a custom raced version someone had made. And so you can see on the front, there's some, some dirt spots around the front of it here. And then, um, it actually has a lowered front suspension. So you can see it kind of scrapes on the front cause it's so low. Um, but you can see on the windshield, there's some marks. We got our, uh, playoff banner there, playoff spoiler, playoff splitter. You can see we do have, you know, just a little bit of dirt. And then, um, I don't think there's anything else real crazy about it here. So, um, as I said, it, it is a little low riding and it, you know, he didn't, it wasn't a significant run or anything, but you know, it was a raced version and it was dirt cheap. I mean, I don't know what else to say. It's a cool looking paint scheme. So I figured, heck, that's that's a good steal for me. So uh, yeah, those two are gonna be the, the, the first two on that list. I'll probably actually not have room for them. So I'll have to move them off to the side here, uh, at least for the time being. We'll get a group group shot later. But um, so yeah, those will be our honorable, honorable mentions. Now let's get into our top 10. Um, all of these top 10s are gonna be raced versions, minus one. And I'll give you a hint, It's uh, there's a good reason for that. Um, and they're going to be listed kind of as, like, the way I see them. Uh, so maybe not by value or anything like that, but just kind of by the way I, I – I, which ones I like. Um, so the first one on this list, or I should say number 10, is going to be his all-star win from 2019. Now this, if everyone remembers, they had the big old splitter, huge spoiler, no downforce. Um, they had these big old nostrils on the hood. Um, they tried a whole bunch of wacky stuff. The race was mediocre at best, um, kind of a forgettable all-star race, honestly, um, but it was his only win since 2017, so it was kind of neat for him to get back in victory lane. You have some marks here on the left side from some stuff that happened in the showdown, which is kind of fun, and then you do have uh, some rubber buildup on the roof and on the front, but uh, overall, it's got some really fun colors. I will definitely say that. It's got some really, really fun colors to it, but... Um, 
If you haven't noticed it yet, Kyle Larson really can race up his cars and make them look really good. So, um, yeah, it's a it's a decent car. It's pretty solid, very colorful, but um, there's just other cars that are better. So it's still it's still honestly an above average race win. But um, yeah, just it, I put it there strictly on the side of you know it. Um, not being super significant of a winner or, or memory of a race. So number nine on the list is going to be this car here. This is Kyle Larson's 2017 Fontana win elite. Uh, this is the car he won with in the second race of the year in 2017, or maybe it wasn't second, but you know, it was early on. Um, but overall it's pretty dirty up front. Even on the side, it's a little dirty, but um, we got the tall monster banner. Um, you can see we do have some marks back here, but not much. Um, but overall, it's just it's a very plain, very boring, basic race win, but it's still pretty cool. I mean, the 2017 race wins especially, I know a lot of people don't um, point these out. I don't know if anyone has, but 2017 was one of my favorite years for race wins, and it was because of this little thing right in here. I got to get to it. I'm having trouble. And the good news is for everybody else, by the way, Kyle Larson won uh, four races in 2017. So if you like the 2017 detail like I do, there's at least four different ones you can get. Uh, but you can see the leather, the cloth. See that cloth piece in there? That's a that's actually something I thought was very unique and very cool for these 2017s. So uh, there are four of them, but yeah, this one is kind of the worst of the bunch. The other ones had some better race damage, redder detail, better confetti stuff like that. This one is just kind of basic and bland, and that's okay sometimes. So uh, number eight on our list is going to be a car from the 20 um, 20. Yes, 2017 as well. This is the Richmond Fall Race. So in the Richmond Fall Race, um, this was the race where Truex dominated. Late race, yellow came out, and he got dumped on the restart. I, I mean, that was literally just what happened. Uh, I do have the event pin for this one, so I was able to snag this off of uh, an eBay a while back. So I do have the actual pin from that car. And um, I said not a ton of detail. You can kind of see some streaks, some dirt on there. Uh, you can see on the front, we do actually have some confetti up here on the hood, the windshield, and across to the back. And then we also have some dirt on this right side as well. So just kind of dirtied up, you know, good short track car, but nothing super aggressive or anything like that. The confetti looks good. We got the windshield banner looks pretty solid. So it's a really solid looking race version. But like I said about the other ones, just because it's a solid race version, you know, if he's got 10 above or, or uh, sorry, if he has 10 above average race wins, then something like this is probably going to end up on the bottom half of that. But still a great race win. Just, um, I mean, you'll know based on the rest of them why I pick, pick, put it here at number seven. So, um, But yeah, 2018 Richmond win was on there. I liked it. Um, the next one on this list is going to be Kyle Larson's 2017 Michigan win. This is the fall Michigan win. It does have a chewed up left rear tire, which I enjoy. Uh, it does have dirt all around it and then a ton of confetti. Um, so if it wasn't for the blue and white confetti that sticks out like a sore thrum, thumb and then this mark from the restart here on the front corner... You can see it on the right front there, that big black mark. Those are the two things I really like. Uh, as I said, the confetti is a huge thing. I really like the amount of confetti on this car. Um, it's probably equally as dirty as the other two from 2017, but that mark and the confetti is what really puts it above. But um, overall, it was a crazy race with a restart that he had. Um, you know, he had raced at the Knoxville Nationals the night before, and Chip said, well, as long as it doesn't affect his racing, he came out and won. So then it was kind of like, well, I guess he did fine. So, um you know, that was definitely kind of a, a cool um, race from that standpoint, but he, he had a great restart. Again, unfortunately, Truex was the one that got screwed because of the late race yellow. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I put that one at number six just basically because it was same as the other ones with a little bit better confetti. Uh, so, anyway, we're going to go down to the number five position. Number five on this list is going to go all the way back. Well, I shouldn't say all the way back. It's going to go probably our newest one on this list, at least up to this point, and that is the 2019 Dover race win. So you can see tons of confetti here in the yellow and black color. Um, it is the Clover scheme, which is a pretty decent paint scheme, honestly. It doesn't look too bad. But you can see here we've got the playoff banner and playoff spoiler, and then we also have that splitter there. So those are all, all aspects that I do like. I remember this race, uh, Truex was better than him as well, so uh, shocker. Um, him and Truex have a little like rivalry, not with each other, but just like constantly finishing near each other. It's kind of interesting. 2017, it was like almost every time. Um, obviously he had his little run in with Kyle Busch and Denny Hamlin a little bit this year. Not like again, rivalry, but just racing around each other, but you know, the championship and all. So kind of a fun little, like, I don't know. I don't want to say it's a rivalry, but just 
noticing that Truex has kind of come up short to Larson a few times, and eventually I'm sure he'll get sick of it. Um, but anyway, yeah, so this is the round of 12. Um, he got this win, and so we got a decent amount of confetti around it. Um, not as much on the detail side. Like, it's, it's like, perfectly clean on the nose. You'll notice there's literally no dirt. It's just the confetti. Uh, there is a little bit on the skirt, I think. Actually, there might not be much on the skirt either, so it's really clean. Um, I know some people said it was an error. They didn't put the... Uh, the race detail on there, but it's also, this was during the tall spoiler thing, so cars were super far away from each other because they couldn't get near each other, and that was because NASCAR, to this day, thinks that high downforce, low horsepower is the answer, so don't ask me, I've already ranted on it enough, um, but anyway, let's go ahead and get on to number four on this list, this is Kyle Larson's 2017 Michigan win from the spring. Once again, same thing as the other two Michigans, by the way. This was the first Michigan I just showed you. This is the second Michigan. So we do have a couple Michigan pins there that I, I like to show off. Uh, but this is an autographed edition. So if it wasn't autographed, it may not be as high. But it is a pre-signed uh, version of this car. It is the Lightning McQueen or whatever, or the Cars 3, I guess. Um, you can see the logo of Cars 3 nowhere because Disney is Disney. And we won't go any further than that. But, um, yeah, you got some race detail here. You can see some fuel spillage, but really it's the paint scheme. I mean, we have the Cars 3 paint scheme. Looks very, very sharp. We've got the yellow. We've got the red. Then you got the confetti that literally matches the color of the car. I mean, you can't even ask for more than that. Like, it literally is orange, red, and yellow. Like, what else can you ask for on a, on this car? Um, so, again, it looks super, super nice. It is the Elite um, as you got the black color on the roof, then you have this flame and the yellow and red. It's just a very sharp car. The paint scheme is off the charts. That's probably the number one reason this, that I picked this car is the paint scheme. Um, but being that it was the race version and it was autographed, that kind of puts it above. Um, overall from 2017, he did have four wins. This one is probably my favorite, but race detail wise, you know, this one has confetti and an autograph, but outside of that, the race detail is probably better on the Michigan, uh, fall race. So. But anyway, that'll clock that one in at number four. Number three on this list <clears throat> might be uh, the most sentimental to me, but it is not necessarily the most um, raced up or, or favorite that way. This is definitely one of the last ones I would ever get rid of, but it is the Chicagoland um, 2018 runner-up car. Obviously, being as I was there, that is the main reason I will never get rid of this car. I got it signed at Kansas um, when I was down there. Not this year. It was a couple years ago. But, um, yeah, so basically, this car is obviously sentimental to me. The race detail on it is okay. You know, you can see the left side, you know, it's pretty clean, pretty basic, nothing crazy. The right side's decent. You know, you got the right front rubbed off it. You can see the right front uh, fender there. And then the right rear is kind of rubbed off it when he was running the wall for so many laps straight and just trying to catch Kyle Busch. And, um, you know, he made a great finish out of this. Like, if you're, if we're being honest, Kyle Larson is, is making the show. Uh, what he did with Hamlin at, at, Darlington this year that that's a race that normally everyone just sails it in there doesn't get back to the gas fast enough and just rides around to second at least he sent it in there went full send and made everybody jump out of their seats for a second and that's the Kyle Larson effect this guy is going to make this na make NASCAR a better racing product for the future and heaven to forbid NASCAR take the downforce and crank it to 11 so that he can't do what he does because without the 750 downforce package, this finish doesn't happen, and Darlington doesn't happen. And I want people to remember that because this guy is going to put on a show if you give him the, put the steering wheel in his hand instead of in the downforce hand. So put it in Kyle's hand. He'll put a show on the road. He, I mean, he will put on the show. This car was proof. Man, I remember this race. Hot again, and it was the day after that other one, but... Man, I love this car. As I said, it is it is uh, more sentimental than everything, but it would definitely be higher um, sentimental. But uh, these other two cars are just, they're something else. Um, now, the other two I had to choose. The only thing that probably separated them was an autograph. But the number two on the list is going to be Kyle Larson's 2016 Showdown car. It is perfectly clean on this side. It is perfectly clean up on the roof with a tiny little mark. But then you get to the right side, and this is where it all comes down. This was that spectacular finish with him and Chase Elliott. Uh, you can see all the donut marks along the right side of the car up here on the fender. No Goodyear letters left on the tires. I mean, used up right side. And this car only got made because of how used up it was and how spectacular of a finish it was. Now, this is also an Elite. I think all these have been Elite, minus um, the Xfinity car, but the rest have been Elite. So, um, so yeah, this one is the Elite, so it does have the, the cool... Uh, 
you know, brakes and tethers and stuff like that, but the right side damage is really what makes this car what it is. I mean, this is the unique part of this car. I actually have a matching Chase Elliott car that has been custom built um, for to match with this set. So I just kind of enjoy that. But uh, this one's number two. Just it's got great race, race detail. It's it's really awesome. But the reason it comes in at number two, and let's get into number one. Everyone probably has not figured out by now. It's his first career win. And the main reason is we've got everything on this car. We've got race damage. We got chewed up tires. We got crazy confetti. Look at these long strands of and streamers of confetti. We've got an autograph on the windshield. We've got another blown out re rear tire with the fenders bent back. So this one is going to be number one. It's probably the most um, sought after Kyle Larson car at the moment. Maybe his Homestead um, car or the Eldora truck. Actually, I do have the Eldora truck. I don't remember where I put it. But I'm just doing mostly cup stuff, I guess, minus that Xfinity car. That... Mm, sorry about that, guys. Had a little knot in my throat. Um, but, yeah, so this car, I mean, we've got everything. We've got these green and blue streamers, confetti. We've got the chewed up tires here you know we've got them looking great the fenders are peeled back on both sides you know it's not just one side we got it peeled back on both and then we got dirt sprayed all around the right and left side the nose is pretty clean honestly but again we got all that confetti on there and it is autographed and it was his first career win so um that one's probably the number one in the collection now i will say there is one other one that maybe i didn't mention um and it's because i really don't know where to put it because it's not a raced version it's actually not even a let's get into it so the last one on this list is not even a car uh a nascar this is a sprint car this is the only sprint car i have of kyle larson so far his 57 sprint cars will be in later this year but um those are sold out by the way pre-orders i can't get any more so crazy how demand that has been but this is the number 42 kyle larson sprint car i bought this for like 60 bucks on black friday a year and a half ago or two years ago i can't remember uh you can see we got a nice signature up there on the wing along with plan b sales and the plan b sales logo um and then we got plan b sales on the wing we got number 42 you can see it, it uh, down along this cover here we got plan b sales again uh it is this was back when he was sponsored by target so we have cartwheel which is the target app um you got 42 on the tank there uh now this is actually really cool so something that the this is the first sprint car i've ever seen that has these these little support spokes here um and it's on both sides we've got these spokes so that's something that you that's unique i haven't seen that on many of them uh this is the only sprint car i have that has those uh let's see i can pull this engine cover up i believe can i or is that front wing in the way front wing might be in the way so i'm gonna pull the front wing off um because i can and then we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the engine detail on the uh on this car here because it's very it's very cool and unfortunately um action didn't make any sprint cars after this i don't know if it was for the mold or what the reason was but um there we go so there you can see the engine detail let's go ahead and go to a two times zoom get nice and close on it but there you see the engine detail on the sprint cars this is a 124th scale sprint car from action um but unfortunately or sorry action lionel um but unfortunately they haven't made any sense so i'm hoping they'll eventually come back to it because as i said the wing is pretty cool the the car itself is pretty cool it definitely doesn't it's not proportional i think the wing needs to it needs to be a little bit uh a little bit taller and a little bit narrower car so they do need to work on some of the proportions of the car but i mean the engine detail is fantastic i mean look at this this is fantastic engine detail and just the the detail on this car is absolutely absolutely phenomenal so um this is definitely one that i really do like um you know it's not uh it's not an overly famous car because he obviously races the 57 more than anything else um but it's a really cool car and i just wanted to show that one off as i said it's not i didn't put it in my list um of cars that it was like i had to show off or put in my top 10 so um but i did want to show it off because it is a really cool car so um but anyway let me go ahead and line some of these up i'm not going to put them in order because there's too many of them and i don't have the the time required to do a good job of getting all of them lined up for you so uh, i'm going to line them up quick we'll get a quick group shot and then i will um and i say group shot i'm just going to get a zoomed out thing so if you guys want to see them all side by side by side let me know in the comments your favorite of the kyle larson wins um obviously he's going to have 10 sorry <clears throat> i was wrong about that he's going to have 11 race wins coming out this year just from his wins at Hendrick Motorsports, 10 points races, and he's going to have one um, 
what is it? Uh, what do you call it? An exhibition? Yeah, exhibition. So he's going to have 10, uh, 10 points races, one exhibition race. Oh, by the way, he's also going to have a checkers or wreckers, one of the best checkers or wreckers we're probably going to see because of what he did at Darlington, which was similar to this one, which here, I'm sorry, I'm still lining these up, but uh, back here. So yeah, similar to this, he uh, put on a great finish. And uh, therefore, <laughs> they're making a checkers or records. So that's that's a sign that Kyle Larson is just something else. I mean, most talented race car driver Tony Stewart's ever seen, and I can't can't agree more. Most talented race car driver I think I've ever seen uh, in my lifetime. You know, Tony Stewart was good, but I didn't get to see him run the the stuff when he was younger. You know, where he was winning and everything. So uh, let's see. I'm gonna back this up. Pull my tripod off. And there we go, everybody. There you see it. There are a grand total of uh, 12 cars here. Ten of them were uh, raced versions. Or sorry, nine of them were raced version. No, yeah, ten of them were raced versions. One of them is a future custom raced version. And one of them is a sprint car. So, uh, anyway, what a season for Kyle Larson. Going to have a lot more of these coming in throughout next year as the Kyle Larson wins start to trickle in. Um, but definitely a uh, good and deserving champion for this year. And I don't think there's really anyone that disagrees with uh, Kyle Larson being our champion. So uh, anyway, thanks for watching, everybody. I hope you have enjoyed. Make sure you hit subscribe and all that fun stuff. Remember, the Sunday special is back until the Daytona 500 of next year. So make sure you have all, your, all the subscription notification bell crap hit. So that way you don't miss any of them. But other than that, guys, this has been Race Craze. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next diecast review.